Wednesday, October 13th, 2010. Last weekend, on behalf of BigGovernment.com, three bloggers attended a local candidate's forum held on Chicago's North Shore between Congresswoman Jan Schakowsky and her Republican challenger, Joel Pollack. In contrast to other media outlets, we asked some tough questions of the Congresswoman, and unfortunately, we were met with evasion, derision, and borderline harassment. This is the kind of treatment you can expect if you are a citizen journalist, unafraid to ask the kinds of questions traditional media outlets have proven incapable or unwilling to ask. Questions like, Where in the Constitution does it give Congress the authority to mandate that I purchase health insurance? Hey, Jan, who are the Democratic Socialists of America? And what is Democratic Socialism? We'll come back to these questions later on in the report. But first, let's recap what happened here at this forum before all of this incivility unfolded. The event, sponsored by the League of Women Voters, is the first of three non-debate public forums that the two candidates have agreed to participate in. Representative Schakowsky has thus far declined Mr. Pollack's challenge for a formal debate. Both candidates move quickly to differentiate themselves from each other on the issues. Support regulations to reduce climate change? Pollack, no. Schakowsky, yes. Support drilling in federally protected areas? Schakowsky, no. Pollack, yes. She wants to spend more and more money. I believe in fiscal responsibility. She wants to appease America's enemies. I believe in standing up for our allies. Most of all, she believes she can use our seat to pursue a radical agenda. I want to be a representative who represents the people to Washington and not Washington to the people. The candidates also sparred over health care, the budget, Israel, and other issues. Well, I happen to be on the Deficit Reduction Commission and so I am one of the 18 members that's been appointed to bring the, uh, the, the budget in balance over the, the long term. She is the number one biggest spender in the House of Representatives, proposing $1.5 trillion in new spending, both in this session and in the previous session. In fact, number one biggest spender since the Democrats took Congress in 2007. We are seeing um, refugees because of the climate change, because their land becomes uninhabitable because of the, of the, the heat that's going on. We see all kinds of extreme weather conditions that are attributed to climate change. And most of that, or a good deal of that, is caused by human activity. The immense cost of the United States and the United States alone adopting restrictions on how much fuel we use to power our economy is that American companies will go overseas and that our own economic production will be restricted. If you really care about global pollution, you don't want American companies going to countries like India or China where there are no restrictions and just polluting over there, rather than being here where there's less pollution and where there's more jobs that Americans need. After the forum, the candidates mingled with the crowd, fielding questions from constituents and media. That's when we started asking tough questions of this elected official. Ms. Schakowsky is a proud and vocal progressive. I'm proud to be a stand-up progressive. And a proud and vocal supporter of Israel. Both political parties and both candidates in the race, and I cite my 100% APAC voting record, are pro-Israel. So I asked the congresswoman for her opinion on American progressive involvement in the Free Gaza Movement's Hamas flotilla. May I ask you a quick question about sure. Israel? Given your strong support for Israel, I'm curious your take on the Progressive Democrats of America's role in the Gaza, the Free Gaza Movement and the Gaza Flotilla. I don't, and Global I'm, Exchange and Code Pink. Okay, I'm not part of the Progressive Democrats of America. I'm not even aware of what they did. I'm not part of that. It would be inappropriate for them, though, to to, to aid in that movement, do you think? Or, or no, yes, it would be appropriate. I do think it would be inappropriate. Yeah. I do, yeah. So far, so good. That was a direct response to a direct question. Unfortunately, the interaction proceeded downhill from there. Adam Sharp of sharpelbows.net asks Ms. Schakowsky a question that shouldn't be too difficult for supporters of Obamacare to answer. Without a vote, hey, hey, where, where in the Constitution does it give Congress the authority to mandate that I purchase health insurance? You know, if, if you, well, yeah. Yeah, it's time to go. No. Yeah, it's time to go. Could you tell me where in the Constitution it gives you that authority to mandate that I purchase health I don't, insurance? I don't see where it is in the Constitution that it says that we can build a national highway system. I don't see Well, actually, the Constitution, the Constitution says post offices and post roads, ma'am. I don't see where it says that we can do 
uh, civil rights legislation. I, I, I asked you about the health care bill, ma'am. Medicare, Medicare and Social Security. I asked you about the health care bill. If we can do Medicare, if we can do Medicaid, I would say that it's pretty well established that the United States of America can address So health where in the Constitution does it give you the authority, ma'am? This is where the evasion begins. If Ms. Schakowsky had a pressing engagement to attend, it must have been out in the hallway, because that's where she was more than five minutes later. Ma'am, you declined to answer my question because you said you had to leave, yet you're still here low these many minutes later. I don't want to talk to you anymore because you're just trying to, uh, you know, Get an answer to my no, question? No, you're, no, your, your goal right now is to, um, you know, to, to elect Joe Pollock and to slam me. For the record, up to that point, none of the three of us had ever had any contact with Joel Pollack. Our only contact with the Pollack campaign was to ask who we speak to for press credentials. They passed us on to the League of Women Voters, who went on to give us credentials under BigGovernment.com. So I've never heard I, of Joe Pollock it, until today, man. Okay, but what I, I think I, I feel like I answered the question that the Constitution allows uh, that Medicare and Social Security and Medicaid are, help, are involved with the, our social programs that we have in our country, and this is as well. You didn't so, answer the question because I asked you to cite I, specific I, portion of the Constitution that gives you that authority. Okay, I feel that I answered that question. If you don't, then you'll say whatever you want. Do you have a copy of the Constitution here? Now comes the harassment and intimidation. When Jan Schakowsky's campaign manager, Alex Armour, asked me who I was with, and I responded, big government, he responded, oh, not really media. What was that? Hi, are you with the uh, I'm sorry, the did you say big government's not really media? I'm sorry? Did you say big government's not really media? Who are you with? What's your name? Don't touch me. What's your name? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to... You, you guys want to walk in circles? You're walking yeah, in circles. I'm just, I'm just curious. I just want to follow up with your comment. That's all. Now comes the derision. As Schakowsky calls blogger Adam Sharp, a tracker. What am I again? A tracker. I'm a tracker? Yeah, yeah that's, that's the name for that. people who follow me around and film. Have you ever seen me before? No, no, no. It's a name for a generic name for people who follow me around like you're doing today and just record everything. That's what, that's what you call that's I'm a tracker. Yeah. For the record, none of us was paid by any campaign to be there. We are citizen journalists who have simply made the move from our couches to the campaign trail where we are asking questions the so-called mainstream media refuse to, like this one. Hey, Jan, who are the Democratic Socialists of America, and what is Democratic Socialism? <laughs> I'm out of here. That's, that's a very legitimate question. I'm going to other things. Well, I'm just wondering, you've time. been honored by the group. I am. They're a very successful group. I guess you're I'm proud And now comes more harassment. As Schakowsky's campaign manager, Alex Armour, refuses to stop placing his hands on Adam Sharp's body. You guys from Breitbart? Stop touching me, dude. Why you gotta put your hands on people well, I, all the I'm, time? I'm sorry, you're, you're following me. That's the second time, dude. Number three, why are you touching people? Why would you touch him if he's asking you not to? I, I, three times. I'm, I guess I'm a friendly guy, and I, I just don't understand why we need to have this. Uh, well, I, I don't, I don't it's feel... It's inappropriate for a campaign manager to be doing that, don't you think? What Ms. Schakowsky won't tell you about her close relationship with the Democratic Socialists of America, Google will. Just search for Jan Schakowsky and Democratic Socialists of America. For founding bloggers and big government, this is Andrew Marcus. Adam Sharp and Michael Cadella contributed to this report.